Hey, everybody. We got a signal. Ah. <laughs> it's Charlotte from Daily Motor. <laughs> what an engine. Welcome to the live drive of the 2021 Kia Telluride. If you're watching this after the fact and you want to join in live next time, hit that subscribe button and sign up for notifications to get notified when we're going live, typically Tuesdays and Fridays. For all of you in the chat, we'll be saying hello here and reading your chats in a minute. But first, a little walk around and intro on the Telluride. Now this is one of the best cars on the market today here in May of 2021. It's packing just about everything that the stereotypical American family wants in an SUV if they have a few kids. As long as they have a few kids, this is pretty much about everything you could want and need and priced really, really well. I'm not a huge fan of this color, especially in this kind of cloudy day. It's not looking too great. They do make some awesome colors though, a little bit of like a dark forest green and then almost a maroon red. Accents really nicely with all this black stuff. But you get this big Telluride grill lettering right over the front. You get the blacked out Kia badge, almost like a matte blackish grill. I think that kind of looks cool compared to your standard sort of glossy black grills. Uh, yeah, it kind of blends in, but also stands out at the same time. Right. Which is neat. The other thing that everybody loves about the Telluride is this. The orange DRLs. Really? You see those coming down the road, yeah. Now, the, you only get the orange in the SX model, which is the top. The lower trims get white, which still looks cool, but this really sets the car off, and it's making a name for itself. It really is. Also, look at these fog lights. I, I just kind of now notice those. Those are sweet. Yeah. Let me see if I can turn them on. Also, it is particularly windy today. You guys know we love to shoot live drives on windy days. <laughs> fog lights on now. Uh, no. Are they? How about now? I don't know. I cannot tell. No, they're not on. Okay. How about... Are they on? Nope. Oh, there they go. Man. Bright. Yeah, those are neat. Whew. Blinding everybody in the chat here. Double HIDs there. Big old bright lights. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of these wheels. I think the, the glossy black painted wheel is kind of run its course. Some people might like them. I think there are better styled wheels, usually the kind of more matte or uh, like brushed metals. Yeah. Kind of the grill and the wheels are giving me truck vibes. Yeah, it's got, a, it's got very much a trucky sort yeah. of look and feel and ethos to it. Yeah, which and is, the color too. You see a lot of, uh, I don't know, what would those be? Taco Tacomas yeah, like Tacoma, in this kind of color? Yeah, that kind of TRD-ish. I know what you mean, that gray. Yeah, yeah and, which is a bit ironic because this is a unibody SUV okay. that really a lot of full-size SUV buyers could totally be serviced just fine. In fact, this thing is more spacious and comfortable inside than that Nissan Armada we had. The Armada cost 10 grand extra, wasn't even the top trim, got worse fuel economy, drove worse. Huh. Yes, it had a tire, higher tow rating, but a lot of people aren't towing 8,000 pounds anyway. <laughs> so many people buying things like Armadas or Expeditions, that sort of thing, would be better serviced with a Telluride. Gotcha, wow. Continue on in the back. Probably gonna be really hard to tell on camera, but this is almost like a... How would you describe this, Liz? It's, it's almost like a brown, yeah, a gunmetal. Yeah. Well, it's plastic, but it looks gunmetal y. Yeah. I think they could have done more of the gunmetal with the wheels. And maybe there is an option for that. Wow, those are giant taillights. Those are some chonker taillights. Yeah. It's a very characteristic car. Almost looks like a budget Range Rover. Oh, yes, I can definitely see that. Right. So, decently low load height, which for somebody like Alyssa, buying a car like this is important. So if you're lifting bags yeah. of cat food in there or something, you can tell okay. even at five foot one, her hips are above the car. Almost by like eight inches, I'd say. Right, and not only that, but it's completely flat going in here. So she could slide something right up to here and pull it in or get it back out. Whereas like yeah. the Armada, it was a completely was, different, yeah. it was way in here yeah. and, and there was a height lip right. that you would have had to get over. And if you, if you had to lean over with that car and the back was muddy because you were off-roading it for whatever <laughs> reason or towing and you had some kickback. Right. You'd get the whole front of you just completely dirty, muddy, everything. Yeah, not so with this. Right. You do have an underfloor, which is nice. So you got some storage oh. down there. I don't know, this is like a, a, a net, cargo net that 
Kia Prince, and I think there's like a towing kit. I don't think this, I don't know if this is supposed to be with the car, but it's been rattling around the whole time I've had it. I probably should take it out, but maybe I can lodge it. There we go. Now it's kind of lodged What in about there. this? This is a storage spot, so you could put it right there if you perpetually had the seats down. You could put oh, cargo okay. cover on there if you wanted. Okay, cool. Right? That's just where it sits. Right. They actually put a spot for it, which I think is nifty. That is nice, actually. Right. Because I think a lot of people who buy cars like this are the types that don't use the third row regularly. Say they only have two kids, so two adults, okay. two kids. But if the two kids want to bring two friends on a trip or something, bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a third row. Yeah. Ah, yep. Sure. Okay. So let's hop on in and get to some of the chat. See Should who's... we pull the third row back first? Uh, well, let's try it both ways. We'll pull one back now, and then we'll see what it's like to do it from, from inside the other way. Okay. You can press this button right here, and the whole seat sort of nice. doesn't get any easier than that. Ugh. Is it that button? It is that button. That's nice. Right? It, it, short of it being powered, that's about the easiest you could make it. Okay, what? And do I still need to press this or pull this? Probably. Not too bad. Oh. How do I make it go back further? Yeah, try that. Uh, yes. Nice. Okay, cool. So we definitely got some chats. Let's get to them here real quick. Uh, Moran, I'm not first, but hello. No Pittsburgh man is here. Andrew the Panda, this one we're sitting in is about 51 grand, but you can get them much cheaper. This is a top dog SX premium. Pittsburgh man, best SUV for the price. I agree, although I kind of prefer Hyundai's version, the Palisade. It's similar. You know, they're pretty much based on the same platform and everything, same engine. It's just a little classier, and I prefer, just kind of prefer the way Hyundai does things, but they're similar. This feels a little more rugged. The other one's a little more luxury. You say classier, but give them a look on this ceiling. Oh, I know. Yeah, no, this, this is, this is definitely up there, too. This is beautiful. This feels like rabbit fur, guys. It's so soft. This is so lovely. Yeah. This is not, this is like Alcantara Premium. Right. Well, like you could draw nice. your name, the fibers are so long in this. Yeah. And look at this, you've got air vents right there and right here. And I've heard from parents with little kids, that's so important because baby sitting in a car seat right here, then you can put the baby and actually direct cold air direct, like right on them, keep them Not cool. Not only that, but they have these little... Oh yeah, to open it and close it. That is on and off. That's neat. Yeah. And I suppose you just do that too. That's so. true. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else we got going on? Top trim is like 50, 55, I think. Yeah, no, this, like I said, bottom right around felt 50. Hi, Andrew. I would buy the Ford Explorer for the same price because Ford is more comfortable and safety. Uh, fair enough. I mean, choice is a good thing. I prefer this over the Ford. That 10 speed in the Ford is not doing it any favors. And this feels more premium and well put together than the Explorer. The Explorer is a decent piece of kit as well, but, but this drives better and feels more uh, well put together. Cool. <laughs> the official Costco wholesale wholesale store says. No way. <laughs> to my own personal opinion, I believe that the Telluride is the best in this class, and you are you, you are sh shared in that opinion by many. Because it could obviously, with the third row down, fit all of those giant Costco <laughs> Costco Costco <laughs> Costco uh, bulk boxes. Right. Yeah. Right. Blah blah blah. Javier, can you test out the Harman Kardon? Already did. We can play a little bit here today, I think. I think I still have my USB drive, uh, if you'd like to hear, but it's not gonna sound nearly as good on this as it is on our actual sound test, which is coming. I gave it a C. Yeah, not okay. fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For $60,000 or $50,000 car, it should be a little bit higher, but yeah. not bad. And the reason why they'd wanna hold out for the actual sound test review video mm -hmm. is you use premium earbuds. Oh yeah. For those, and for this video, it's just, just because it's live, <laughs> we're just using the GoPro sound. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep, it is a Harman Kardon system. There are 12 of them, 630 watts. iOS or Android? I use Android. Alyssa uses iOS. Neat. Well, as adults, we are particularly comfortable back here, and that is I important. Am. Let's, uh, even if we pull. Ah, always drop this. Pull back? Yeah, pull the seat back. Wow, that's still a lot of space. Right, and you can adjust these. They're, they're both pretty far forward, but even if I reach up here and move it all the way to its furthest back position. You can see as a five foot 10 person, I still have knee room. 
This has obviously got a ton of knee room and head room. Yeah. My head does start to just barely hit this back portion, but I'm fairly, I could, I'm comfortable. I could be back here for, for a few hours if, if I needed to. Okay. Um, and there is a little third seat right here. So you could put- you could Messing put a, around with this, hold on to that. Yep. Yeah. Get that folded back. There's a little uh, dome light that comes on for the trunk when you open the doors. A seat seat belt for the middle seat. And then right here is where you got your little lights. It's on because the door's open. Cool. Got it. Button here? Uh, yeah. Or you could just slide on up there, one to two, you know, either way. Can you tell the specs, like the engine capacity? Yes, this is a 3.8 liter V6, naturally aspirated, making about 290 horse, like 289 or 290. Okay. Uh, I'm blanking on the transmission. I, I wanna say it's an eight speed manufactured by Hyundai Kia, okay. but we can uh, we can take a look. Pittsburgh man, no, I, I, this, this is more than a five and nine under uh, third row. Like you could fit, you wouldn't wanna fit three adults necessarily, but I, I would be totally fine. I mean, the seat is reclined a little bit, which is good because normally it's like this, well, much more straight up and down, but I can- You guys can see the difference too. Recline it back. I could totally be back here for a while. Yeah. It's no Yukon XL or Expedition Max, but this would definitely be fine for, let's say six foot and under adults. Cool. And it is an eight speed base model Mercedes GLE or Telluride. That's a tough question. Moran, you know I like Mercedes overall. I'm not a big fan of the GLE. I don't really care for how it looks. I don't really care for how it drives. I would take an X5 any day. Well, I guess that's, is the GLE X5? Yeah, yeah. I would take the X5 over the GLE. And it's kind of hard to compare because the GLE is definitely clearly luxury, whereas this is just kind of like barely eking its way into luxury. For the money, I would definitely take this though. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of the GLE. I like the GLS, and we're getting a GLC here soon, so I'll tell you about that one. <laughs> GL, A, B, C, D, E, and E. It, pretty much. They make an A, B, C. Well, I just named e. them, so. <laughs> they made E, and they go all the way to S. Now, which button do I press to put it back? You just. Oh, there is no button. And then there's the underneath. Underneath the rod. And you can refine it. Hammy, I would take the pal Palisade. It's mostly personal preference. They're both equally as good. The Topher did notice that the Telluride has some odd shifts, and I noticed that as well. We'll try to see while we're, we're, on, we're on the road. And the Palisade shift tuning is a little more mature. But other than that, it's all personal preference. Do you want a little more of the Range Rovery, kind of rugged, off-roady type look? Or do you want a little bit more of the Mercedes-ish, lighter interior, a little more futuristic looking? Hmm. And I, I would take the Hyundai. Cool. Yep. Uh, okay, so second row, really remarkable in this car. You've got heated and ventilated seats. So right there, I could fire up the cool, nice. cooling seats Ooh. for the third row, which is awesome. You've got window shades, very nice. They cover just about the entire glass area, which I think is really neat. Again, you got your vents right here, good for kids, good for adults, also good for babies and car seats. Look at that giant thing right there. Yeah, you can fire up your own climate control. Very easy to do for the second and third rows. And you've got these big old lights. Wow. Yeah. Huge center area that you could put bags, diaper bag, or uh, whatever gaming console. And Giant then, speakers on these on these doors too. Yep. Yeah, big old speaker grills. You got a wall style outlet down there as well as a 12 volt. I am a little surprised not to see any USBs back here, but maybe they're all A's. Oh, no, there are. There's oh. two USBs right there. Neat. And there's two in the third row too. Really, really? One on either side, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, see, gift that keeps on giving. You've got a little bit of a panoramic sunroof. It doesn't go all the way through, but the back seats have theirs and the front's got theirs. Yeah, it's yeah. honestly kind of nice that way because then like, say the kids want to see out, but the parents don't want the light shining on them. And you also get your own- uh, Right, the climate control. Climate there. control right there. Yep, totally agree. Would not get that if you had a full panel. No. Mm -hmm. You can also get a much prettier interior in the Telluride, like a nice dark brown that looks looks Ooh. very, very nice. This, bland, like this black's a little bland. The seats. The design on the back looks cool. Yeah, look at that cool stitching. Right, it's Napa leather. It's really nice, but um, the brown is the brown's cooler. Cool. Man, cars these days are getting so good. Like heated and cooled seats for the second row. That's new for me. I know, right? It's crazy. This brand is continuing to push its way up, and I'm actually not a huge Kia fan. I haven't really appreciated much they've given us recently. 
the Telluride and the Stinger are kind of the only ones I like yeah. from Kia. There might have been a third one I'm missing, but didn't really care for the K5. Yeah, we had a K5 a couple weeks ago, and that yeah. was like not inspiring or exciting. No, and then uh, I think the Sport, it, no, Sorento, the new Sorento looks pretty good, so that'll be cool. Cool. But yeah. Okay. Neat. Up to the front. Also, show them the door handles, how it like. Yeah. It's got like a design open on the bottom. Excuse me, guys. Yeah, it's open on the bottom. I don't know how well you guys can see that. One of my favorite things about the Telluride is how easy and common sense everything is laid out in the cabin. You could just be plucked off the street, never been in an automobile in your life, and get into this car someone tells you you need to do certain things, drive it or certain functions, and you'd be able to figure it out. Fairly straightforward. Volume knob, big, nice knob right here, easy to use. Symmetrically flanked right here with a tuning knob. All of this is a nice symmetry, very easy to use climate controls, your heated steering wheel. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Must pollen, pollen is out today. Yeah, pollen in the air. Heated and cooled seats, very straightforward. Up for heat, down for cool. Nice cool rocker knobs there. Shifter. Very large and in charge, easy to maneuver. Drive mode switches, very easy to roll through. It's not like Ford where you shift or you, you turn it and it goes the opposite direction. <laughs> um, what else? You've got things like parking brake. You can turn off the engine stop start really easily. These are all plastic, but they look nice. They kind of look metallic. Just uh, everything is easy to use, especially after getting out of that ID4, <laughs> the stupid two uh, window switches and all the capacitive buttons. Look at the steering wheel here. All these buttons, again, nice and symmetrical, very common sense. Volume, track selection, all your cruise control stuff. It says very clearly, cruise, and then set, resume, cancel, following distances. I mean, What's it's nice too is that these are actual buttons so that you are not as easily going to be accidentally hitting them all the time mm -hmm. while you're driving, while you're turning your wheel, with your hands are all over the wheel and you're just it's not a great idea in my opinion to have touch sensitive buttons heat sensitive buttons on your steering steering wheel right because your hands are all over it you're going to be turning on voice control when you don't want to exactly yeah even adjusting the brightness say you get this as a rental car and you got to hop in in the dark and adjust the brightness of your gauges right there it just all makes sense mm -hmm. it's all clean and easy and straightforward the infotainment screen, no gimmicks, just kind of what do you need to do? Do you want to do map or nav or phone or sounds of nature, which is a total gimmick, but still, <laughs> still at least it's a straightforward. You got passenger talk, which you can yell at your kids in the back and it amplifies your voice from this microphone into the back seats. So you can That's tell really little cool. Johnny to keep his hands off his sister. Rough. <laughs> it's an Alabama car. <laughs> Even things like opening the sunshade, again, very straightforward. This passes both of my petty tests because you got a handle here and then a huge fully extending um, visor that covers the entire window. So if you guys can't tell, I like this car and I like it for its simplicity, straightforwardness, and uh, just giving the driver and the owners what they want and nothing more. Eight speed automatic. Yep. Yeah, yep. eight speed auto. 24 on the highway according to the EPA. We managed 26 today in our testing at 70, so it was good. This has the prestige package, so you're getting that head-up display, 110 plug, the nap of the leather seats, the premium cloth headliner and the sun visors, heated ventilated second row, a few other things, but I mean this is everything you could want in a Telluride, including the tow hitch and self-leveling rear suspension out the door for 50 flat after freight and handling so and you get a 10-year warranty i mean wow. it's just it's kind of a no-brainer and these kia's selling these things like hot cakes they don't even sit on the lots people follow wow. the truck in and they're they're accounted for right away wow, that's amazing yeah as much as i love the mazda cx-9 i do appreciate not having to screw around with a little turbocharged four-cylinder in this thing <laughs> You just got the good old V6. Speaking of the engine, Moran says, I don't think this car will do my favorite things. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think it holds gears. Let's check the soft limiter real quick while we're, while we're here. So here's your soft limiter, about five grand. Red line, 6,500, so yeah, it gets up there. Moran just likes to be able to make a bunch of hoot nanny noise <laughs> in yes. parking lots and yes. drive-throughs. 
revving his engine all the way up to nine grand. <laughs> Moran, there is a Mercedes AMG R63 for sale in my neck of the woods. For it's like, it's got a lot of miles. It's like 150,000 miles, but I think he wants like 35 grand for it. And it's had all the important work. It's had the what is it? Not rod bearings, but the you know what I'm talking about. The main thing you got to do to the engine to keep it from grenading itself and a lot of other work to it and i don't know it's it's uh not that we have that kind of money sitting around but it, <laughs> it is tempting because i feel like it'll appreciate hmm. anything else the pittsburgh man and hammy tech think that the carnival is dope i cannot wait to get a carnival i got a bug kia bug in a carnival real soon I'll the sorrento as well yeah Sweet home, Alabama. <laughs> uh, BG says, I just joined. Is this overrated? Hey, uh, what, what is this full name? BG Master or something? Like no, that? it just says BG. Oh, I was thinking of, don't we have an old person who used to join a lot that was like uh, BG? Killer BG B Master. Killer BG Master, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, no, it's not overrated. I, I genuinely think this is a very good vehicle. Nice. One of the senior car and driver editors said once, Every, like you could just have a Telluride and a Boxster, and you'd be set. All you all you'd ever need. That Telluride like and a, a Boxster nice GTS. Setup. Yeah. Yeah. Head bolts, Moran says. Head bolts. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. This is a nice smooth ride. I know we're going kind of slow on some really decent road. Mm-hmm. No, it is. The ride is pretty darn good. I was surprised the road noise is a little louder than I would have liked. It got a pretty good score on our decibel rating on the highway test, but it just, I don't know, I expected it to be a little quieter in here. Mm. That's not too bad, I guess. Right. Well, I think for it being all on body frame, so what it- No, unibody. Unibody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not body on frame like a truck. I see. Donation amounts for today. If you guys want to help us out, pay for our gas. We hit $5 of donations. We'll put Alyssa behind the wheel. Let's see what she thinks of the tell you read. And then it just happened. What? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that was yeah. quick. You guys are reading my mind. Was that yeah. Pittsburgh man? No, it was BG, four ninety nine. Hey, Thanks, man. Thanks, BG. Well. My uh, turn to drive. Yeah, we'll drive a little bit and then put Alyssa behind the wheel. If we do get up to $20, we'll take this thing off-road. We have... Actually, we don't have an off-road mode. I thought we did. <laughs> We've got snow. That's kind of close. But you can lock the center diff. Yeah, you can lock the center diff. So we'll go and test that out if we happen to get $20. And pretty much that's just paying for our gas and the cost to go uh, wash the car afterward. Nice. So half of that on Cash App, we get just another, would that be $7.50 or so on the Cash App, and we'll take it off-road. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. BG also is asking when you are getting the TLX Type S. I don't know. Is it in the near future at least? Yeah, they'll probably have them in the fleets in the next month or so. Okay. It's going to be cool. It's going to be a good car. The normal TLX is good, so I'm sure that uh, the, the Topher drove it and said it was amazing. It's not Type S. So. Wow. Yeah. Acura has been doing a lot of great stuff lately. Also, I had a, I filmed the sound test on the Acura RDX with the ELS 3D system, and the darn microphones didn't work properly. Oh, so, jeez. Wasted footage. Great. Spent a whole morning Aww. doing it. Feel a little zero to sexy here. Getting Put it into, into spurt, spurt mode. 13 rating or PG-13. <laughs> Ooh, got a little bit of wheel spin. Gonna have to turn the traction control off. Wow. Felt like it just killed it. It, oh, it totally did. There we go. Got some wheel spin there, too. And 60. It's uh, not exactly a no. rocket, but totally fine for daily driving. If you were towing near the capacity, this thing would, it would, it'd have to work. But this V6 doesn't sound bad when it's revved up. Let's do Moran's test now. Does it hold gears? Manually shift down to second. Shifts automatically. Wow. Not too surprising. Why do cars do that? Do they assume people don't know how to drive manual anymore? Well, a little bit of and the engine. Two accelerators. They probably manufacturers feel that's not what people.
people want. They gotcha. don't want to stop accelerating. They'd rather keep accelerating. So it'll hold a gear until it, it needs to shift and then it shifts. So okay. It just depends on the ethos of the vehicle. Gotcha. Who was asking you earlier to do a test on the sound system? Probably don't remember, right? It was like, it started with a J. Javi? I think it was. Yeah, he's asking you again. <laughs> okay. Well, we can, uh, let's do the highway portion and then we'll do the sound system. Okay, good. Yep, we do have our USB right there. Yep, we got the stick. We got the stick, guys. Ron says, I know, I do know a 4,000 mile silver R63 for sale for 53 grand. 4,000? Yeah. Not 40? Maybe he meant 40. It's, if, it was only three zeros. Wow, four thousand miles. That's that just seems like a deal to me. I feel like yeah, you, Mar Mar Maron, you should be going and buying that and yeah. just just park it. Yeah, just, and it's a California car. So absolutely no rest. Be a deal. Get it, get it. We'll get it after this. Okay. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Like we probably won't be able to squeal these bad boys because we're gonna have a forester on our tail, but we'll give it a shot. <laughs> These tires love to scream. single lane to a double lane, and we're just going to watch and see what happens. Never mind. <laughs> well, okay, now let's, let's let it catch the lane, and then we'll let it reevaluate. Come on, I just spoke so highly for you, Kia. Catch the lane again. Oh, there we go. It's probably mad at me for just letting it plow me. Like, look at this. Over here. It's doing it. It's doing it itself. Nice. I'm not steering. Yeah, and Hyundai and Kia don't really tell with this, and I will say Hyundai's system works a little bit better, but I mean, it was doing that, and it'll do that for upwards of a minute or two before telling you to put your hands on the wheel. It's really quite good. You can hit me with comments. I'm hitting you with comments. Okay. Um, Hammy Tech is asking, JDM or German? It just depends. Do you want reliability or do you want fancy schmancy breaking and leading edge technology? I tend to lead in JDM just because I'm pragmatic and I don't like spending money. So usually getting German or Japanese things allows me to, for it to be more reliable and cost less. What does JDM stand for? Japanese domestic market. Oh, got it. And BG is asking how the RDX audio fared. It was good. It was really good. That's why I'm bummed that uh, I didn't get to share it with you guys. Because the Topher had the RDX. And he was like, and, and we weren't getting it. And he said, hey, uh, if you want to swing up, shoot a sound test on it. Go for it. And then so I, I did. And then I got back and something, it was really warm that day. I think my GoPro was running hot. And something must have happened where it didn't kick the microphones on. Rough. So it, it recorded sound, but it just recorded it through the GoPro, so it would sound like this, and it just, you can't get an accurate sound test like that. It mm. just sounds like trash. And for you being the sound test guy, now on YouTube. It's gotta be accurate. It's gotta be yeah. premium quality. Otherwise, people are gonna be like, dude, that sounded like garbage. Look at this donker. Movie. Wow. Probably getting towed away because someone couldn't make the payments. Aw. I think that's sad. Yeah. Yep. The Pitman says Hyundai systems are slightly better. Hey boys. Yeah, I don't know why that is. I mean, to be fair, they're not the same company anymore. They're trying to differentiate themselves more and more, and, and Hyundai's is, is better. Nice. Ron says, yeah, it's 4,000 miles. And he doesn't want to get it yet because he just leased the Model 3. Performance. He got a Model 3 performance? Yeah. Wow, that's neat. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Man, you got such a cool fleet of cars. Yeah, he does. And, and cool specifically for myself, because they're all cars that I really like. I like the GLS, especially yeah. the 63. I like the Model 3, and I like the Shelby. And I like the E-Class that he's got, too. Man. Yeah, I know. That kind of guy. Seriously. Hammy Tech agrees that JDM is better on performance. 
Well, in performance, that's a little, uh... Oh? That's up for debate. Oh? Never mind then. <laughs> Maran, Maran Samadhi would like to know your address. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he says working on his Mercedes is not too bad, so I'll take his word for it. Cool. So, he owns... Maran now has two German cars and two American cars. That's pretty cool. Anything else? We are caught up. Cool. Well, that's just in time for us to hop out and do another little walk around on this Kia Telluride, one of the best SUVs on the market. And I don't say that lightly because I'm not a huge Kia fan. So <laughs> for me to say this is an excellent car, uh, that means a lot. Let us know if there's anything else you'd like to know on it too. We can trying to cover everything, but we'll take a little peek-see at the engine, we'll get Alyssa behind the wheel, get her thoughts, because ultimately this car is probably going to be driven by a lot of soccer mom types, huh. so it's always good to get kind of a, a, a different stature's opinion. You know what I think is ironic with that? What? A lot of soccer moms, or just moms in general, they don't have to be soccer moms, are driving the biggest vehicles on the market today, and they're all SUVs. <laughs> like, the Durango is supposed to be a soccer mom car. Right. This thing, which I think is giant, the Yukon is giant. Because they're moving people. I know. And things. I know. And gear and yeah. stuff. I just find that to be kind of It is ironic. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's why it's good to see, because you drove something... Can't remember what exactly it was. You might though that the seat didn't go high enough up on. I, there were like th there have been three cars now that it didn't do that. Right, um, and that was like sort of a soccer mommy sort of vehicle. If yeah, I remember correctly, that, might have been the Armada. I don't. Did I, I don't think I drove that Armada. Oh okay. Mm, yeah. Lucky you. I remember you asking me, and I was like, no. <laughs> the ID4 didn't go up high enough. Really? We actually had a sedan that didn't go up high enough too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and yeah. I don't remember what it was either. Hmm. Maybe you guys do. Yeah. The other car we have this week is the Volvo S90 Inscription T8 Recharge. Long name, but oof, that's like the journalist car right there. So smooth, so fancy, so nice, and only 70 grand, which you know, for everything you're getting, the powertrain and everything is, is quite good. Um, it's only 70 grand, folks. Right? <laughs> but I'd be fine with a S90 and a Telluride. That'd be a great garage. Cool. Hop on out. Also, cup holders, very straightforward. Bottle kind of fits in there, gets hugged in, you got your wireless device charging, and uh, and you got that little thing. Also, I just forgot to do the sound test, so um, let's do that real quick before, okay, okay. before I forget again. Javier is asked nicely. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna go radio, hush. <laughs> Way too loud. And then we're going to do USB music, list, up. To, to our sound test. Crank it. This is how I do a sound test every time. The issues I had with the sound system, it's, it was too much in the high range, too much tinniness, too much coming through the uh, the tweeters and that low when it comes in doesn't hit you in the soul the way it should it's, it's too high range so right so what I ended up doing is I drop dramatically down I went like that and then turned it up more didn't really help but it took the edge off and you especially hear it with more like the R&B type music. Gotcha. It actually sounds decent from the third row. Probably because you're sitting closer to the subwoofer. Oh. Yeah. But it's okay. It's got a surround sound mode too that sounds very fake and artificial. All kind of, it sounds echoey now. Okay. No Mercedes, no Volvo. All right. There 
you go, a little sound system demo. If you want to see the whole thing, uh, keep an eye out in a few weeks. I'll have it posted. What is this? This little, oh, I thought it was a compartment. It's just a little fuse box cover thing. How's that going to go back on? Oh, God. Damn it. <laughs> Here, Liz, you take this. But you really can't get it back on. No. You still <laughs> walk around. Like All right. What do you guys think of this color? And what about the black, the matte black there we go. Uh, combination? Would you guys get it? Get the matte black, or do, do they do chrome on this? I don't know. Huh. And I'm pretty sure you can get different wheels. In yeah. Fact, I know you can get different wheels. Here are the know. wheels again and some sunlight. Yeah. Cloudy sunlight. Yeah, what color would you guys get this in? Charlie said it comes in a nice forest green and a yeah. nice bright red. Looks like a maroon, it's like a dark. Ooh, color. never mind. It's, it's like a wine. nice. Ooh, I like that. I'd still get green. Does anybody know what tell you ride actually means? Let us know in the chat if you do, and don't look it up. Don't cheat. Alyssa will tell us in a few minutes. Cool. I look Hood it up struts. There. So that's fancy. Nice. Look, it actually, engine bay looks kind of crisp. It looks really clean. I'm surprised. Yeah. Dusty, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. This car's got five grand on it. Huh. <laughs> in uh, in the college world, GDI means uh, goddamn independent. It's for like, uh, if you're not in a frat or a sorority, <laughs> but like you still like hang out with that gotcha. lifestyle, you're a GDI. <laughs> but here it means gasoline direct injection, so. Gotcha, okay. Not quite the same. Although I like the image that uh, Telluride is not a sorority. <laughs> no, it's after she found someone to buy her a Telluride. There you go. Yeah. Uh, were those quad exhaust tips I saw? They're probably fakies. There's no way they're real. Yeah, so it's the name of a city. Yes. In where? Colorado, I thought. Colorado. Yeah. Oh, yep. Wait well, a minute. No, oh, no, they're just quad, twins. Just, just twins. Oh, and they are real, actually. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, they go right to the right to the muffler. That's surprising. Hmm. You got your full size tow hitch. Telluride is actually a compound, a chemical compound. A tellurium is an element. Yeah. Like the element on a, that you'd find on a periodic table, and when you have. Um, a chemical compound. It oh, like like chloride. Yes. But telluride. Telluride. Really? Tellurium. Yeah. In the town of Telluride, did they like mine for a bunch of tellurium? Maybe I don't know. Huh. But it's an element. So That's neat. I thought it was cool. Getting learnt at Daily Motor. Yeah. It's kind of nice the height and the setup of this. You could totally uh, tailgate in it. Like yeah, if you're watching your kid's soccer game. Perfect. Yeah. You have your kids here and Back then. Back up to the fence. Right. Yep. So in fact, you could probably even have these up and use them as backrests. Let's that see. would be really cool. Ah! No, you can't. There you go. You're just making the camera go everywhere. Yeah. I'll show you guys. I'm comfy. I can, I can chill. Chill with a beer? Yep. Yep. It's nice. Should we uh, give him a little exhaust clip? Sure, why not? Before you get behind the wheel. <laughs> Maybe I'm too close. It's real hot. Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> Spitting out back at me. Nice purr. Yeah, a little, a little nice, rumble. Nice, cute little purr. Yeah. Cute. All right. These. Yeah, you go ahead and Hand get situated. Off. Oh boy, we got uh, JDM German arguments going on here, I see. Arguments? Yeah, I think. I don't think so. In a JDM car, you pay more to get the same power as a German car. Moran, for example, in the, in the GTR, you have to pay over 15 grand to reach 570 horsepower, and a stock GTR engine can't handle over 800, but a stock AMG 4.0 can handle 1,000 easily, or anything AMG can handle more power than JDM. Yeah, you might be right, but GTR is well priced. What's funny is that there are two GTRs. There's an AMG GTR and a Nissan GTR. So who's he talking about? I don't know. <laughs> if 
if I had to have either an AMG, Mercedes AMG GTR or a Nissan GTR, I would definitely pick the Mercedes. That car is awesome. I'm ready to go. Look at you quick. all set up. That was quick. I, don't, I always forget to do my mirrors on. Probably the most important part. Jack Latimer said, damn, from a V6? Yeah, man, no two liter turbos here. It's on? It's on and ready for you. So we got Alyssa behind the wheel of the Telluride. Get kind of a, a smaller person perspective. It's important for many people buying cars like this. Nissan fan forever. You know, I'm sorry to say, but <laughs> I liked Nissans back until about 2012. And then since then, Pity knows what I'm talking about. It's just- Pity man. You know, Carl Scone or Carlos Scone or however you pronounce his name, is just totally in it for himself, stealing money and not giving a darn about the company and it's just gone to poop. And it's sad because Nissan was cool. And now it's not. Oh. Yep. GTR is the only car, GTR and the Sentra, the only car Nissan's I'd buy. This is ridiculously comfortable. When you said earlier that anyone that was just off the street, didn't know how to drive, and you just gave them like a quick 10 minute, okay, this is what you do, and they set up their seat how they want, could totally just get in here and drive comfortably. Mm -hmm. This is very, very nice. Oh, it has, I love this. Blind spot camera. Blind spot camera, it's not on for the whole duration. Well, probably because it came to a stop, maybe. Oh. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Maybe because I was, I had my foot on the brake. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that's super nice. As soon as you turn your blinker on, it shows you on either side of what's in your blind spot. So you don't necessarily have to crane your neck. You can I like that. Pixie. I really like that. Oh, we got a family of geese pass crossing the road here. It's goosen. It is? It's a plural of geese. Or no. She's so mad. You babies. <laughs> okay, <you're free> bird. <laughs> How much? Oh, look, a little Kia K5 coming. See, it's got the, the orange LEDs too, the um, DRLs. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking blah, 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 till R34 and MK. Oh, yeah, that's different. My uh, man, my driver, a Mark IV Super, would be pretty neat. I, uh, Moran had a 2010 GTR Black Edition. It's not even close to the base model AMG GT. That is something I will say about JDM versus like AMG or, or German cars in general is the, the German cars are always more bonkers. Even the, the, yeah, the Nissan GTR is crazy fast, don't get me wrong, but it feels more approachable and more like, okay, like this makes sense, it's calculated. The German cars are like sledgehammer, like are you kidding me? Like. So they, they take it up to the next level. They really do. But anyway, back to the Telluride, the Kia cars, Koreans. <laughs> what I would like to see in this car and what Charlie could actually probably tell me whether or not you'd find that in this class is I do like the digital speedometers. <laughs> there it is. Yep. That's awesome. Also, and are you able to see the head-up display? Or is I was just gonna say this doesn't have a head-up display, but I'm just too short to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be able to adjust it. Uh, I can see it now. I just have to adjust it. I didn't even know it was in here to adjust. Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes me happy. Those are the two things. I was like, oh, I want those things. Yeah. And this car has it. That makes me happy. This is one of the few cars, I'd say, if someone were in the market for this type of vehicle, I'd say the Model Y would definitely be up there because it's just around this price, 52 grand. You could get one of those, but this car, you don't have to screw around with charging. You don't have to screw around with electric vehicle network and you get more features. You get heated and cooled seats in both the front row and the second row. You get a larger third row. It's a larger yeah. vehicle overall. It rides better. It's quieter. The sound system's not as good. Um, not as fun to drive. Definitely but, not as fun to drive because it's a lot slower. Right, but yeah. and you get a longer warranty. So, for ten a family year. or something, yeah. It's a 10 year warranty too. 10 year powertrain, yeah. Yeah. Yep, so, no, th this is one of the best cars on sale in terms of holistic. Yeah. Palisade has a full digital, that's where I think Kia mixed, messed up by not copying. 
you know, I, I see what you mean by that, Pit, Pittsburgh man, but there is something to be said yeah. for just good classic gauges. I mean, those just look They look nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the, the center display doesn't look super high def or super classy or expensive, but it works. And at the end of the day, that's the most important part. So I see what you mean, but it's not a big, it's not as big of a deal as you think. So this, I mean, this compared to um, uh, I, some of the other big SUVs you've driven, I mean, it pretty much provides everything that that Yukon did, but like so much easier to drive. It is so much easier to drive. It does not feel like I'm driving a big vehicle. Yeah. Which I've driven a few big vehicles. That Yukon, the Navigator was oh, yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. uh, that Durango thing, I You're did right. not like driving that Durango. This feels really very easy 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 to navigate i don't mind the steering weight at all they nailed it it's like they a really good weight they nailed it even like there's the no way play the, the uh well there's not much play which is good i mean right. i can still do this yeah, and we can bit. still pretty much go very straight um it just doesn't feel heavy which is nice mm -hmm. i do remember probably the first big suv car i drove was that honda crv Oh yeah. That thing, a lot smaller than this, <laughs> was so heavy and so tanky. And I thought Honda did that really well because it felt substantial. It felt like it would protect you. It felt I felt safe in it. I felt like the car was like, don't worry about this, I got you. <laughs> but something that is this big, you don't want to feel over encumbered. Right. And you totally don't in this. I like that a lot. I was gonna say something. What was it? Oh, uh, Hammy Tech, will you review the Mark V Supra? Already did, buddy. Just gotta search Daily Motor Supra, and we had two. We had, uh, or maybe we had the same one twice, I think is what it was. So I think I did the whole suite sound test, fuel economy test, and review. And I even did a video where um, there was a subscriber who owned a Shelby GT350 Mustang and was interested in getting a Supra, so I took him for a ride in it. And then he ended up buying a Lexus ES350 instead. Huh. So, yeah. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful dark uh, dark blue. I'm gonna get a full on. Ooh, is Liz gonna floss it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna do Alyssa's version of flossing it. This is still pretty decent speed. I'm getting, oh, even got some tire squeal. <laughs> so here's the cruise control test. I mean, she did watch me do it earlier, but someone who hasn't driven the car before, how long does it take her to set the cruise? I hate these cruise control settings as well. I didn't have that in my, I do. I don't like them. They're in every single car. But they're straightforward. I don't think that they are. What well, do you go bottom to set? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna wait to, for some lines to come up. Ford behind me is gonna get mad. He's got it on the lane. There you go. It drives itself. I mean, you still gotta pay attention, don't get me wrong. It's, it doesn't claim to, and it is not as robust as the actual semi-autonomous driving uh, modes. You can see it's getting quite over. I really don't like, this yeah. truck is like, what are you doing, bro? Right, Liz is doing a little bit of the drinky drinky swervy swervy over here, but. I canceled it, I don't like it. It is, I mean, that's a very sharp corner, so the fact that it can do it at all is impressive. And the nice thing is you can just cruise along on a straight highway and just kind of have it do it for you. Yeah. yeah. This looks really nice, but feels very, I mean, there's no like actual grain in it at all. It's very plasticky, but it looks the part. It looks like it would be though. Right. Which I like. Yeah. Yeah. I actually really like the muted colors in here. Mm -hmm. You get a little bit of this chrome, which looks really good. Um, I like the way the wood looks and I like how the black complements and brings all of those things together in a nice dark package. Yeah. Um, it's not too harsh in your eyes and I really like that. Alyssa likes a nice dark package. Okay guys. William Taylor says hi y'all again. Hey. And Hamimi or Hammy says did <laughs> they not get the changed Kia logo? I, I don't think guess they not. Did. Because it's just yeah. the old, the old classic. Someone earlier said that the, there's no new badge on the, the wheel. Yeah, that's a good point. In 
Indubitably. <laughs> cool, we got about 10 minutes or so, so if there's any other things you'd like to see or know about one of the top cars on sale here in 2021, the Kia Telluride, let us know. It honestly doesn't look too bad for a Kia. No, I mean, I think Kias, a lot of new Kias have looked really good. The new Sportage looks cool. Or is it the Sorento? I always get those two confused. They both probably look decent. And this looks great. The K5 is overstyled for my taste, but I still admit yeah. it's kind of cool. Um, the Stinger is awesome. Love me a Stinger. And, but this Telluride looks a lot better when it's, yeah, um, when it's green or just a different color. It's a boring color. And I don't like the black on this color either. Mm. I like the black against the blue. Bluish gray, would you call it blue or would you call it gray? I don't even know. Yeah, blue gray. It's Blade. like a it's like a stormy gray sky color. Yep, yeah. So on stormy gray, stormy gray sky color days, it just looks bland. Stormy Daniels. Hmm. What they should call it. <laughs> That's the name of the color, Stormy Daniels gray. <laughs> Great marketing. <laughs> cool. Well, the other cars we're getting this week is going to be a really fun one because we are getting not only do we have a Volvo S90 T8 inscription. But we're getting a C8 Corvette, a Z51 T on Friday, and the new BMW M4 six-speed manual. So that is going to be awesome as well. And then next Monday, we're getting the new Honda Ridgeline, another great car. So we are getting like, it's pretty much a week of, of all-stars, which is great because we've had a week of trash. We've had multiple <laughs> weeks of trash, let's be honest. ID4 is a pass. The Armada is a pass. Miata is good. Miata is good. Armada, bad. Mm. Um, 430i, pass. What else have we had recently that I don't like? Pretty much everything. But, good cars next week or two. We're also getting an E-Class, which is also one of the best cars on sale today. Um, so, I'm, I'm happy with all that. I have a question for you. Okay. So, we've had a couple of uh, viewers asking if I'm going to do some more manual driving training mm -hmm. on that M4 that's coming up. We might put you by, let you try we might, it. We might do that. Yeah, it's we a totally different it. beast than the Miata, but um, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. Cool. Neat. All right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Hammy's saying it's uh, the Telluride's not famous here in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they like big American trucks like the Yukon and the Tahoe and the Expedition and everything. Well, I mean, I get it. I Gas it. is cheap and it makes a statement. And don't get me wrong, it's like that here too. I bet you see 10 Tahoes and Expeditions for every one Telluride. But people should realize that a Telluride or a CX-9 or a Palisade or what else is in this class? Oh, the MDX is a little nicer, but still in this class. Um, those will probably suit you just fine. Well, one of my friends has a Telluride. I drove it for two weeks. It was good, but not as exciting as I wanted. Well, yeah, it's not an exciting car. No, it's it's just, just a good car. It's like, it's like a good meal, like a good, healthy, home-cooked meal that you're like, oh yeah, like this is good. But yeah, it's not exciting, like going I would out say and it's getting like, a like, really good, hibachi. like Yeah, I would say it's like a good uh, meat and potatoes. Yeah. Like a beef stew. It's cold out. You just want something that will like make you feel good right soul food kind of thing but it's not like oh yeah this is really spicy very exciting no it's just like you're like oh i'm doing i'm doing the right thing here and i feel yeah. good about it and, and you do enjoy it i mean it is yeah. good it does everything well <laughs> yes that it was aimed to do right yeah yeah and almost exceeds expectations yeah. but your Going expectations fast, are fairly though, bland was not no. one of the things that they were aiming for it to do so it doesn't do that well right well, and our, our view count just tanked i wonder why i don't know if our signal is trashy or what but i'm looking at it it looks like it's okay yeah strange do you guys have a tiktok or other social i can follow i mean we have an instagram we don't really do much with it but you can find us at the daily motor on instagram yeah yeah you've got a website that you work on yeah mm -hmm. we haven't bothered with tiktok because we're 25 and 26 so that's well, we're like 10 yeah. years too old for that well and yeah it's just busy yep so let's do another little walk around Do I need to turn off at all? I just did. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this color definitely looks better when the sun shines on it, but I, in general, I'm just not a fan of grays. Just, it doesn't do a car like this justice. It looks like a stormy night sky, though. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah. Stormy night? <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's anything else you guys want to know, let us know, but we're going to wrap some things up here. I'll only one last walk around. 
yeah, I think these are gonna continue to sell well for a little while. They'll probably get a mid-cycle refresh in another year or two. That I think is this is yeah, it's larger than our forearm. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. Hmm. We might do a little bit of towing with this this week, too. Probably not, but um, this is an all wheel drive. Do you think that's necessary? Do they come in a real wheel? You can get front wheel, I think, actually. But um, I mean, if you live somewhere that doesn't get any sort of snow, yeah, I would just get front wheel drive. But if I'm getting an SUV like this, I probably want to have all wheel drive. Okay, yeah. Neat. Well, thank you all so much for watching and joining in. And we will see you on Friday at 4 p.m. with... I don't even know yet because we're going to have a few different cars. I don't know if we'll do the Corvette or if we'll do the S90 or maybe both. You guys will find out, but for now it's a surprise. Right, exactly. And we'll see you on the next one. We're Charlie and Alyssa from Daily Motor and as always...